Hi friends, I wanted to today show you a bit of my wardrobe for springtime. I hope that you're having a lovely spring if you are experiencing spring on the northern hemisphere that is. I know some of you have told me that uh, you live in Jamaica or uh, in Australia and so life is totally different where you live compared to me. But for this time period, I really have found that the best way to build up a wardrobe for spring is to have an arsenal that you can handle these large temperatures of like 80 degrees and these low temperatures like we're gonna have tonight at like 32 degrees and so plus it can be windy and everything so I do have different pieces that I really need for springtime and plus I'm just so excited about celebrating uh, spring with like more feminine pieces, more ruffles, and just beautiful tops and dresses and all of this, and a little bit of color, uh, not too much, <laughs> um, but just like a sprinkle. So I have some pieces to share with you today that are really helping me this time um, for this season. Also, if you missed my last video, Zach and I moved from Nashville to Virginia, so I'm sort of setting up everything again and I wanted to share what my wardrobe looks like right now and sort of my thinking through that. It might be that I change things up a little bit here and there and I'll probably bring you guys along for that as well when I do. But I wanted to show you how I store my clothing and what I'm doing for this space. So. I wanted to have one room where I would have a space to pull shoes and shirts and jeans and jackets all from in, in one location. I didn't want to be hunting down different things. I didn't want my jackets tucked away. I wanted them like part of this. <laughs> so this is gonna be great because as you know, I do mostly wardrobe and like fashion and style videos here on YouTube and as well on my Instagram and so so this is why over, you know, probably since 2017 was when I started over on my personal style and I have what I've talked about in my course, I've talked about intentionalism where each piece has a purpose and I can see myself wearing that for like 10 years at most, um, or at least. But I wanted to have that 10 year goal of like, I want this piece to work for me and if it does for that time period, then I know that it will really um, pay off in far, as far as like the cost per wear and all of that. So yeah, those were my initial thoughts. I might as well just talk you through it. You might see that I have these racks of clothing behind me and uh, they, actually came from Nashville, the, the racks that I have. They move, they're on wheels. Let me show you. <laughs> so yeah, they're really fun because you can just pop them up, put clothes on them, and they have wheels so you can put them in any part of your house that you want to. And it's just so cool. I love this to have these racks instead of having something like um, you know, having them in a closet all tucked away where I can only see slivers. It's better for me to not be overwhelmed by seeing a lot of clothes at once, but rather this is all I see, like one featured item in the front, you know, something that's new where I can just have it out in front and be excited to wear that piece. If I could outlaw loud cars, I would. If I were queen, that would be my one decree. <laughs> I would have so many more videos taped. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, anyways, this is my one rack of, you know, I wanted to be able to have my tops that are light on one rack. So I could be like, okay, so I want to wear a light top today and I would have this one place. In fact, for springtime, this is what I'm gonna wear the most. So I put my more blouses and um, feminine pieces up front and center and they make me so excited for springtime. If you have something too that comes off the rack very easily, then I highly suggest looking into velvet hangers because they grip more and they don't damage the garment. They actually protect it very nicely. So this is one of my favorite tops, a perfect example of the like white button downs that I love so much. Um, I, you've definitely seen me wear this one before. It is from Ralph Lauren. I love all of the ruffle details. I love the ribbon. I love that it's cropped up as well because I do like my high-waisted pants a lot. 
Um, yeah, so that's a perfect example. I also like them to be a little bit on the ivory side just because of my skin undertone. And you can see I kind of have them lined up here to move more and more into ivory. And then I have um, some, some of them, some of my knits are hung up on hangers. And I know that that's like a cardinal offense. Like you do not want to hang a sweater. Um, but why I hang this one is just because it's so lumpy that it's very difficult to store in a drawer. Um, and also I wanted it to keep its shape and most of the weight is on the hanger shoulder and the, the shoulder sort of drapes. So it's a well-designed hanger um, and it has a little bit of grip here as well. So it's not like draping that way. Uh, by the way, this, I believe it's called a bicycle sweater, and it was in the 20s and 30s, it was designed to be worn when you ride a bicycle. And so it's just so perfect for if I want to go in my park and just like, I don't know, ride a bicycle. <laughs> but it's so feminine. I love anything that has this like Regency feel of having these puff sleeves, and that's definitely something that might be trending right now, but it's a trend that I wanna always have and I always am going to accept a puff sleeve in my wardrobe. Down here, I just have some tees and then I have um, some button downs, things that are gonna get a lot of use and definitely do. And I even have a few turtlenecks left in this group. Until it gets past the 30 degree nights, I am keeping turtlenecks in my collection for spring. Um, then once we get around May, I think I'm gonna put them away for good. When I do store my clothes, I put away them by season. So I'll have a bin and I'll be able to store away those items that I know I won't need. So the minute that the, the icy cold temperatures go away, I start to fill in those boxes for um, having fall clothes put away. And so these light turtlenecks end up being at the very top of my fall collection. And so the great thing about that is that's the first thing that I'm gonna need when it gets to be early fall. So late spring and early fall, you're going to need that last and first, and it's so great to be able to store those pieces toward the top. Down here, I do have just a few different prints and colors that I'm using for springtime. And so I don't have this as like one of the main pieces of my wardrobe. This gets way more timeless than this will, um, but when I do find that perfect print or that perfect color for the season that I'm in, I apply them to pieces I will only wear for that season, and I know that once, once spring rolls around again, I will love seeing this again. But I won't want to wear something this bold and colorful all year long for every season, so I'm very particular. I don't pack up all of my, I don't like pack my wardrobe full of um, bright, colorful things. I try to work with pieces like this that I could use for the majority of the year. And then anything that's colorful or a print, I put on seasonal items and in very few quantities. So for this rack, I wanted something where I'd be like, okay, so I don't want a light top, I want a dark top today. And so that's where I've sort of designated this space. So I usually love to wear denim and chambray tops this time of year. Chambray is just a lighter weight denim, really. It's just it, the way that it's constructed. I believe it's more of a diagonal and it's, it's something that's a little bit more high end than a regular denim. So I have the denim and chambray ones here and I can then decide, do I need a thick fabric today or do I need something that's thinner? And that's really the main difference between the chambray and the denim. Chambray also can be worn for things like formal dinners. Um, you can wear something like that when you can't necessarily wear denim. So it's a little bit more of an upscale version. Um, and it's older than denim. Um, so I've got just a few different tops here. I love to have this one piece in the front so then I can get really excited about wearing that piece or finding one similar within this collection. And then I have a few pieces that are in the navy tones. I love this one. I got it in 2020, I believe, and it is on the sexier side, but I love having this soft silk. It does need a little bit of esteem. I did pull it out of storage. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to wear that one. I have a few more of these blue notes here. Um, 
and a very occasional print here. So very feminine. I thought that, you know, when I think of my style, there's one part of me that's very feminine and there's another part that's very like utilitarian, um, academia, menswear, right? And so for springtime, I wanna lean more into that femininity because I can this time of year more so than when it gets colder like in fall and in winter. Um, so yeah, I love anything. I'm just really excited to wear this one. Um, I also have some knits. I have a few, I think I'm gonna do some new in. Um, Alexa Chung, I was able to snag a couple of pieces from her before she closed her doors recently. Uh, I, mean, I love this top so much. Another knit that I thought I would go ahead and hang instead of put in a drawer just because it's so unique and beautiful, has these beautiful little pockets and everything. I just, anyways, I'll show you guys later a full try on. Um, but I do like to stay warm, so I'll get to outerwear in a bit, but it's nice to be able to have these very like loose weave pieces as well. I love striped tops. I love Breton tops, and I love anything that's cropped up, so when I can find that perfect mix, I definitely want that. This one's from Laleen. Um, and I love this vest I just got in as well from Free People. Ugh, I'm really excited for that one. So like stripes are something that's such a basic timeless piece for my style. I think I will always grab a anything that is a stripe. I just I just love it. It's so classic and beautiful and it it inspires me a lot for springtime and it it makes me want to just like hop on a boat and go somewhere. <laughs> I have some of these that are the black tops. I just have an assortment there of t-shirts and like everything is here really, but I don't have too many black tops for this time of year as opposed to when it gets to be much colder um, because I am leaning more into those white tops before. And then finally down on this side, I have some of my camis and really they are kind of difficult to, to hang on to a hanger. So I do use those velvet uh, hangers and for me, I'm just thinking, okay, a cami is more of a utility piece where I'm like, I, I wanna wear this blazer so I know I'll wear a cami underneath and then I sort through which color. These are my pants. <laughs> I highly suggest if you have more than two pairs of jeans, hang them up because when you do, you are able to see the full gamut of the rise, the color, if there's any sort of distressing, and if it's a skinny jean or a straight or a flare, you are able to get all of the details and when you pull them out, they don't have any creases on them as if you were to put them in a drawer. So this is my solution to a problem that I think really needs to be solved for most wardrobes. I used to have S hooks and I lost them in my move and it's been quite a moment of misery because these slip off and that makes me so sad. I wish so badly that I could tell you that I have found a pant hook that will not dig into your garment that holds up like this, but I haven't. And so the best thing I can provide you with is a link down in the description to S hooks where at least you could hang them and they won't fall off of the hook. With that being said, for now, until I replace the hangers, this is what I'm working with and yeah, um, the pants I love, it's just the hangers as a solution are very difficult. So in the center here, I have all my jeans and then I sort of work within a color scheme here. Um, I, I don't have to make everything perfect like this. Okay, seriously. <laughs> this is out of order. It's not like this should be over here, but um, I'm not that much of a perfectionist. I, it's just a little bit bothering me, but don't look at it. <laughs> Moving down the line, I have some of my proper trousers and some shorts and then I move into my skirts. And my thinking through this is that I never think, you know what I want to wear today is a skirt. Like that's never occurred to me, but I do have some skirts that I absolutely love. And so I want them in line. 
So my thinking is I, I want to have that stream of consciousness to be like, okay, so here is um, my jeans and then I will then grab a skirt. For springtime, I highly recommend getting a wrap skirt because it's not something that you might wear every single day, but when that moment comes and you need to wear something that's a little bit more sophisticated, a wrap skirt will look good on nearly everybody. I've had this one since 20, I think I've had it since 2016. I might, might have just gotten it. It was one of my very first pieces. Um, no, it was 2017. And it's beautiful linen. This is never going to go out of style. It's gonna go with every top virtually and I just love it. So I ended up getting this one in one more shade, just the black, just so I would have a little bit more variety. But again, if you have a cut that really works for you, then you can get it in more than one color and you're safe. Um, so I'm very intentional with the things that I wanna purchase and keep. If I can't see myself owning it for five to 10 years, then it's really something that's a little bit more trend-based and I might find that I don't wear that long-term, in which case I do sell pieces to if I just find that it doesn't work because I don't want it to just you know, go to waste. So um, yeah, so that's my thinking there. I have my trousers and skirts some shorts, and then moving into jeans. And then you guys know I love Jessie Cam pants. And so I have a few over here that are more seasonal colors, bright colors, and that's been so much fun to experiment with. Like, look at this. It's a dream. It looks so retro and it just really mixes up colors because I have, you know, regular blue jeans on right now from her Jessie Cam again, but when you find that perfect cut, like you can then experiment with colors that you can still see yourself wearing for a while. And I just love that feeling. Um, I feel like it is such a solution as opposed to these hangers. <laughs> but I'd much rather hang something any day, like a jean or a pant, than fold them up and put them away. Especially something like this, which could get dingy too. If it was folded for too long, it can really start to wear down on the beautiful color. what so for my outerwear for these really transitional days where it can be absolutely so warm and then by nightfall you are freezing and it's windy I want things that keep the wind out but I don't want to be swelteringly warm in them either so my solution to this is leather jackets, which will keep you sort of insulated, um, but it's not something where you're going to feel ever too warm in a leather jacket. My favorite that I love to have on display is this one by Acne. Uh, I worked with Farfetch a little while ago and they gave this one to me then. I have adored this piece. I literally, I, I wore it today actually. I just think it's just so awesome. Like it's such a juxtaposition to those white blouses before and I would gladly combine that. I would love to wear a white blouse underneath this awesome like edgy jacket and I love that it's asymmetrical too. It would be too much if there was all this detail on one sleeve and not the other. So I mean if you can find an awesome moto jacket like this do it because you will always wear that thing. And I have attracted so many memories to this thing that now when I wear it, I feel like I'm right back at my friend Katie's birthday party. Like it's just so much fun to be able to think back on those times. I've done whole videos on this, <laughs> um, but I won't try to go way too deep into the idea of collecting memories on pieces and what it does for you on the psychological thing. I'm literally not going into that right now. I'm not going to. I'm just gonna keep moving. Um, denim jackets, another really great win for this time of year. I suggest having one that's cropped because that's gonna be so great for if you wanna wear something that's a high rise or anything like that. And then I suggest wearing one that is longer so that you can have that if you sort of wanna tone down things or look more professional even in a denim jacket. And then I have one that's sort of a mix of everything. This one from Age has this asymmetrical cut again. And that does wonders for proportions. If you wanna wear something that's maybe a little bit bulkier or maybe not quite long or too short where it's 
might be hitting you off at a wider point, this is fine because then you are doing something as an optical illusion. And again, this piece just makes me feel very nostalgic about different things that just remind me of growing up. It reminds me of my grandmother, it reminds me of my dad. I, I don't know, it's just things that I'm remembering when I wear it. Um, through here, I have some pieces that some might consider only for fall, but because my style has a lot of academia to it, and because my like my complexion is, I think, textbookly like an autumn, I wanted to be able to have some pieces that just really work well for me and the mood I'm in and my lifestyle. So I have some that I wore this, I actually got this last fall. I love this thing so much. I love that it's tweed. I love that it's mixed with cashmere. Um, this is not polyester by any means, it's tensile. And then I have these little elbow patches on here. I wore this to a Dickens party at Christmas and I literally like, not fist bumped, but elbow bumped another character who was wearing the same thing. <laughs> Another one of my favorites is the suede jacket. This is so beautiful. I think that when I wear it, it reminds me of a 70s feeling. Um, it has this drape to it that I can wear it with anything and it starts to feel a little bit more casual and um, it has this own swagger to it that uh, really makes me feel inspired in a lot of ways. So yeah, um, I wear this quite often. I could wear it with what I'm wearing right now. It's something that seems to go with everything. I have a few of these that are very drapey. Um, this is a cardigan from Elizabeth Suzanne. It's her Clyde jacket. Uh, it's so artistic and it makes me just very inspired to do something creative when I wear that. I've got a couple of blazers. Lightweight blazers are amazing for this time of year. I suggest looking at Rachel Pally for her blazers. And toward, like that's just this one half of the rack. The rest of the rack is things like dresses and jumpsuits, things where I don't have a lot of time to get ready and I just need one thing that equals an outfit. <laughs> and so for my jumpsuits, you know, jumpsuits can be very utilitarian. They can be very manly and I love that. I think that that works better for me in the fall. And so I've put these more feminine ones um, front and center for me to wear this spring. And look how lovely this is. Like I really can't wear this in fall comfortably. And so that's why I really wanted this to be one of my main jumpsuits that I wear for springtime. This is another one. These are both from a piece of part. That is where I go to for a lot of my jumpsuits. So comfortable, so magical. Like the color is great. It's very lightweight. It feels like pajamas and that's how a jumpsuit should feel if you are trying to add one to your wardrobe. Um, this color is more of a mustard color and that's actually one of the it colors for this season. And so because I, have something that also matches a trend, I'm able to keep that here and also sort of play with the trend idea as well. I think that the best trend that you can explore is the one that you already own. So because that color worked for me so well, I was able to get it in this shade as well. Um, this is from Christy Dawn. You guys asked me a little while back, it was like back in fall, if I was expecting when I was wearing this because the dress was on my knees and so you couldn't really see it with the table in front of me and I had to explain to so many people that no, like, but there was it was just funny because they were like, do you have news to tell? And I'm like, well, not yet, but when I do, this will be an amazing dress to wear for that. It's an amazing dress to wear now. I love this thing and I love the pattern on it. The floral pattern really brings it into spring. So yeah, it's great. I do have the occasional white dress as well. Don't wear this to a wedding, but definitely wear it to brunch or anything where you wanna feel a little bit more formal. Um, or you could dress it down. I like to wear this with a straw hat and some you know, sandals, like some slides would be so great to wear. Uh, but I do need to tailor it before I wear it with anything that's too flat just because of my height. But other than that, this is great because I can sort of pull the sleeves down if it's a date night or anything like that. 
So there's ways where you can wear something that's extra formal in very casual and comfortable ways, things that really are appropriate for the event. So those were my clothing racks, but now I wanna show you how I'm utilizing furniture in this room to accommodate what I need for storage in my wardrobe. This piece of furniture came with the house, and with that said, I didn't want to necessarily move it or anything. I wanted it to stay right here and utilize it for my wardrobe. So this top part, though, was quite a mystery. I'm like, what am I going to put in there where, you know, if I stack clothes, it's just gonna fall or whatever. So I thought that I would use it to store my purses. I thought that this would be such a great place when I figured out that I needed a place for my purses and I had this place open. And what's great is that they're out of sunlight, they don't get dust on them, I don't have to store them in the bags that they naturally come in um, for storage, I can just leave them out and on display and yet they're tucked away. They're not like cluttered or messy or anything. So I just have them displayed with the tall ones in the back and kind of color coordinated a little bit. Um, and what's strange to me right now is that, you know, I think, I think things like purses are so trend-based that it's really important to me that I stick with things I know I'm gonna keep around. And so out of a point of intentionalism, I am embracing sticking with neutral bags. I have them in different sizes. Um, a lot of these have been sent to me. I, I gladly accept them. <laughs> um, when, they, when people wanna give me a bag, I think that that's like, yes, thank you. Um, but each one I have selected. And so I have things that are a little bit on the smaller side. And I recently read an article that was like, oh, you need to ditch your small bags um, because they're out. And I'm like, you know what? They work for me and that's what should be the most important thing. And so, yeah, um, and then, you know, if I wanna embrace like a bigger bag, if I need it for my lifestyle, then I'll definitely be doing that. This also is a great thing to do when you're trying to consider things that are proportionate to your body. Cause I did the big bag thing like 10 years ago and it was, really a nightmare. Um, and so I'm not going to do huge bags anymore. I, this is really as big as I go. Over here in these two drawers, I just separate my loungewear from my pajamas or like not even pajamas, but like things I really need for, you know, like sweatpants. <laughs> um, I do own some sweats and I only wear them when I am sweating and that type of thing. Um, and then I have things that are more properly loungewear or pajamas like this piece, um, things that I absolutely love to wear around my house and still wanna look chic, they go in this drawer. Um, I have an assortment of hangers that I had from my move and I'm sort of just putting them in a drawer. It seems to make the most sense than them clanging around or anything. Um, and then down in here, I have all of my sweaters. So I wanted to color coordinate this and I've done a good job for the most part. I have all of my ivories here um, and then ones that are more neutrals. I have them here and all I need is one little sliver. Now, the incredible thing about storing sweaters is that if you store them in this way where you can see them all, um, lined up, then all you need to see is that one to know exactly which one it is. As you know, that's different than when trying to figure out which pairs of jeans are in here or anything like that. Okay, I kind of always forget what's down there and I realize, ooh la la, that's all of my panties and bras and stuff not organized yet. You do not need to see that drawer. And then in this little closet, there's a lovely mirror where I can see myself. I do have a better mirror out there, um, but what I put in here is really things that need to be stored. So I just have like a couple of things that I keep wrapped up. I know where they are because I always think about them. This is my favorite coat um, from Ralph Lauren and it's like this military coat. It's kind of cumbersome to take out of the wrapping right now, but anything that I just want to store and keep out of the sunlight, keep perfectly preserved, I put it back here. 
And then because baseball caps aren't necessarily something I wanna have on display, anything that's a floppy hat, I keep up there on the shelf as well. And that's just really great. So yeah, that's everything that I have and how I sort through what pieces I'm going to store away, fold up and all that. Next, I wanna show you my shoes. Okay, over here for my shoes, I wanted to utilize something that would really let me display it. And so the quickest thing on hand was the bookshelf downstairs. And I thought, you know what? I really don't need that down there. I'm going to bring it up here and put my boots on it. Um, so, that's actually been so good because I can have them on display and um, they've been so wonderful to just have right here in the same room. And yet, because I'm using furniture, it feels very homey. It was really just one of those things that was a happy mistake. It was something where I'm like, okay, I, I need to just put something here. And now I don't even think I will change it. I love the feeling of having real furniture up here and my plants too. So yeah, it just feels great. My thinking is really just that I would have these boots here and then it would sort of go down into things that were a little bit more, not casual, but um, like not so, not so boot-like, <laughs> like Oxfords. So here I have my Oxfords. These are the Emma Dorsey. I love having these cut out like this, um, being that it's a Dorsey shoe, it's just so great to have that. Very academia. You can definitely see that I'm playing here with that a lot. And then just further down, I have some of my flats. And then I have also things that aren't necessarily too formal. I have up here too, like my clogs. Yeah, and then I'm really just working with sandals and some slip-ons down on the ground where it's just very easy to slide on a shoe like that. Uh, next to it, I had this piece in our house that was, the original owner was storing like decoration in it, which you know, it's probably it's better, like more typical use. But because it has a light on the inside, I thought this is the perfect thing to put my perfumes in. And so I wanted my perfumes in here too because you can just create outfits and put them on and then you're like feeling like a vibe, you know, and you wanna put a certain scent on. So in here I have um, my little perfumes, like these roller balls. Uh, I have some of my more like signature scents up here, like Cezanne, um, Chanel, and that type of thing. Zach has his cologne in here. He, he's got his own cologne space over there. He doesn't need to have this in here. <laughs> Maybe I'll wear it. Um, I love that. And then at night, when I turn on the lights in here, then that light is just illuminating the bottles and it's just the coolest look. I really hope that if you've been following along for a while, you remember this piece. I used to tape on the floor in front of it and talking about who knows what, um, but it's an old antique piece that we got in Virginia um, a few years back. And so we were able to buy it here. We brought it to Nashville, we brought it back and it made it the whole way. That just tells you like how solid this glass is. Um, I love having antiques because in the words of one person I bought it from, once you buy an antique, you don't have to buy another piece of furniture like it again. And so I totally relate. I love that it has this little skeleton key. Um, it's not really a safety feature. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't really do much except hold this tight. I mean, it, if someone wanted to get in here, they could just like, <laughs> but uh, don't do that <laughs> because at least my house is secure. We have several layers of security and yeah, not really a problem there, but this key isn't doing the job. Um, so yeah, I have my rings and all of my necklaces here. Again, collections of things that people have sent me or ones that are heirloom pieces. Um, not all of them are highly valuable. They're just things that I really, really love and mean a lot to me on a personal level. I think that this again is the magic of just having it feel like home, build outfits and then putting on pieces to really make something work. Because when it comes to a neckline, your necklace length and, and what that necklace says about your style is going to matter. And it's really great to be able to swap things out on the go. 
I do have some remaining shoes up top here. These are my by far mules. If you followed me in 2019, you saw me wear them consistently. And I didn't really wear them much during the pandemic. Nobody wore heels or shoes for that matter. <laughs> um, but these have been so trusty. And so because of that, this season, I bought them in white and black as well. Even though it's only been a few weeks, I really do feel confident in just having one room for this and also just making it feel homey through using these little random bits of furniture and um, also the plants and everything really help. I love to walk in here in the morning with my coffee and just sort of get inspiration and this space really makes me feel that. I think because it's an old house too, they had fireplaces everywhere and so at first I'm like, I wish that I would have this extra wall to be able to sort of put a mirror or something instead of that, but the fireplace really makes me feel inspired as well to be honest and just having that nostalgia of a past time, even though obviously we don't need fireplaces quite as much anymore and um, they don't work or anything. It's just nice to be able to decorate them, make them feel homey, and that's what this room really means to me. So yeah, thank you for letting me share it with you. I had so much fun today sharing this little corner and um, talking through some pieces that mean so much to me. So if you like this sort of thing as my official first closet video that I've ever done and I know you guys have been wanting me to do one for quite some time, hopefully this means a lot to you. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you can see when I post next. And with that, I will see you then. Oh.